Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent computer role-playing game. This week I'm taking a look at a sort of strategy RPG from a few years back, Legends of Eisenwald. Developed and published by Atterdux Entertainment, it was released on Steam back on July of 2015. Legends of Eisenwald is a medieval strategy role-playing game set in a historically inspired old Germany, doing away with the most fantasy elements but still maintaining an aura of superstition and faith. It focuses on leading a band of warriors through the land, facing opposing forces, defending towns and castles, and seeing how your choices impact your ability to go through the main storyline. In terms of plot, there's actually a few scenarios as well as a main campaign. The main campaign is Legends of Eisenwald itself, in which you play a noble heir. While visiting your father's friend in another land, something terrible happens to your family, forcing you to try to reunite your lands and gather allies when you return to them. The other scenarios included are simply single scenario offerings set in the same historic or medieval Germany. Once you've selected your campaign, you then select a hero. There are three heroes, each of which is a different class. The knight offers decent melee skills, the Baroness offers a ranged and hunting ability, and the Mystic follows various skills in astrology and alchemy, each of which has a different set of equipment and skills that they can learn. You then select a gameplay difficulty. There are four difficulty levels which can impact various aspects of play. Easy, Normal, Difficult, Ultra Difficult, and then there's a Personalization tab that can be used in conjunction with any of the four other difficulties and basically randomizes individual characters' abilities. Once in the game, the interface is fairly simple. The main screen is dominated by a view of the world which can be panned and rotated as necessary. To move to a spot, interact with a unit, or enter a building or other settlement, you simply click on the area. In the upper right is your minimap. In the lower left, there's an indication of the time of day. Time can be set to advance all the time or simply advance while you are moving, and the rate can be adjusted to allow time to pass more quickly or more slowly. The bottom indicates your overall army stats. There's a gold and expenditures value, the number of castles you control, which can impact both your income, as well as the number of troops you can support. Your total number of recruits and mercenaries that you can have in your band are listed as well. In the lower right of the screen, there's your inventory slash army screen, your map and journal that lets you review and track ongoing quests, and finally the overall game menu. In the army inventory screen, you can review your various character stats, upgrade individual characters, as well as modify their equipment. The upper left allows you to select which character you're looking at at any one time, as well as modify your overall formation. You basically have three ranks that you can place characters in for battle, melee, ranged, and support. Although you can technically put each character anywhere, just do so at your own risk. Putting your support characters up front is probably just going to get them killed. Each character is either a unit or a hero. They're all treated similarly. Characters have a few statistics health that determines how much they can take before receiving an injury, melee defense that helps them offset melee damage taken, attack rating that determines the amount of damage they do, range defense that modifies the damage that they take from ranged attacks, initiative that determines what order they go on in battle, and then willpower that can affect how hard it is for spells to affect them, with enemy spells costing more and friendly spells costing less. Each character has a slew of skills that represent the sorts of things you can do in battle, usually various weapon attacks that are limited based on what you have actually equipped. Characters can also equip items in a number of slots. Some characters, based on their class, have basic equipment in one or more of these slots that's always there unless it's overridden. This gives them a baseline of stat adjustments. Otherwise, characters can equip a helm, a set of armor, a weapon, a shield or offhand item, two potions, as well as four trinkets. Some characters may also equip a horse, saddle, and lance, which they may end up mounting onto the horse or not, as necessary. What characters can equip are based on their classes. Each item equipped may modify one of your basic ability scores, and some may have drawbacks. For instance, heavy armor and large weapons tend to penalize initiative even though they have high damage and high defense. Characters also have a level and experience. When you receive enough experience, you will are able to upgrade yourself. For heroes, this means you have a skill tree. These skill trees may grant benefits as well as additional abilities as you advance along their path and are genuinely dependent on the class of the character in question. Units, by contrast, generally advance through unit types, which advances their skills and gives them more options in combat. 
Some units may have different upgrade paths that allow you to turn them into completely different types of units. Back in the main game, you basically wander around fighting opponents and undertaking quests. Speaking to a neutral NPC or going to a settlement may automatically trigger a conversation, which is pretty standard for role-playing games. There are other choices in these conversations on occasion, but they may offer more or less information on a subject, trigger different quests, or do other various story-based things. Some quests have a few ways to finish them, and some quests are mutually exclusive. For instance, early in the campaign, you must choose between a number of quarreling vassals, and while you can pick any two to keep at your side, this does mean that you have to figure out how to subdue the others, and their alliances and quests are no longer available to you. In settlements, you may also pick up rumors from various NPCs, which can either grant additional quests, information on ongoing quests, background information and legends of the world as a whole, or simply humorous encounters. Other things that you can do in towns and settlements include selling and purchasing equipment to outfit your party, or healing up your various units slash treating their wounds. What is available in each settlement varies from map to map, but generally speaking you can heal in castles and churches, buy in churches and towns, recruit in churches and towns, and pick up rumors and hire mercenaries in taverns. Mercenaries differ from usual followers in that they cost more and have a higher upkeep, but don't count toward your overall support. When you manage to take over some towns and settlements, you may begin collecting taxes from those settlements from then on. This may also boost how many units you can acquire. You can leave units in garrison settlements that you own so that you aren't totally at your opponent's mercy if somebody comes by. Generally speaking, each scenario has a single large map with a main storyline and a number of side quests that can be accomplished along the way. The campaign just consists of several of these scenarios in order, with your character's skills and gear and troops sometimes carrying over from one to another and then sometimes not, depending on the needs of the storyline. When you encounter an enemy or a scripted combat in a landmark, you enter combat overall. The combat system is reminiscent of certain other tactical games, such as Heroes of Might and Magic. You get a map that is based on hexes, and then characters are arranged to act based on their initiative, plus a little randomization. There is an overall battle log available in the lower part of the screen so you can re review what's going on, as well as an option for a fast battle if you don't have time to play it out. Each type of troop has a basic attack based on their weapon, as well as any special abilities that they may have acquired, such as waiting until the end of the turn, using an item, using a skill, or just defending. Characters who engage in melee must advance towards the nearest enemy and attack if they want to attack at all. Only when there are multiple enemies the same distance away can they actually choose their target. If you can attack the same target from multiple hexes, you may choose the hex that you originate it from. Ranged attackers may attack mostly free and clear targets instead of moving, while support characters can try to unleash their blessings and curses on any relevant target on the battlefield. Play proceeds in turns until one side or the other is wiped out, or only has a few units left, or units without offensive capabilities. If a unit is reduced to zero hit points, they are removed from combat and sustain a wound. This wounded status reduces their stats and health in any future battle until cured, and if wounded again they may face dire consequences. On a victory, your active characters gain experience and you may also receive gold and trophies. Trophies can range between equipment, consumables, or even just trophies or items that you can sell or use for quests. As far as graphics and music go, Legends of Eisenwald is a little bit janky, and the interface is a little bit unpolished, but it could be far worse. The overworld looks alright all in all, suitable for more of a strategy type game than an RPG, and indeed, although the RPG elements are very well in there and they are decent, it really is more of a strategy game slash RPG hybrid. The music is decent enough, although it does get old after a time. I have personally had issues with a few bugs in the game, rare but pretty brutal when they do come up, mostly having to do with crashes or other glitches during combat. I should also note that the difficulty level can spike in certain scenarios, so the overall progression of the game can be a little bit uneven. The writing is decent enough, what it lacks in polish it makes up for in sheer atmosphere and world building. The world of a superstitious medieval European land is well presented, although more than a little jaded and cynical all in all. The combat can get a little repetitive at times, which is somewhat made up for during the more challenging scenarios and combats, but the challenge is very inconsistent. You can be cruising down a road facing nothing but peasant bands when suddenly an opposing noble or mercenary band comes out of nowhere and nearly curb stomps you. It is to be expected considering the genre, but do be advised of that. 
All in all, I think at least the original Legends of Eisenwald is decent, but I would probably get it on sale if I was going to get it at all, or maybe in a bundle. It's decently written in terms of a game uh, play, and it's got a historical medieval storyline and tolerable gameplay overall. There are some standalone expansions for it that basically use the same engine, and I want to say these are actually a little bit subpar. I wouldn't actually recommend any of them unless you're a real fan of the original game's gameplay. If you enjoy strategy RPGs and a sort of pseudo Heroes of Might and Magic styling, though, at least the main one may be worth checking out. And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up here. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday Legends of Eisenwald. As always, I will leave a link to where you can pick it up below. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you're still watching this far, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have supported this channel via Patreon or direct donations throughout the years, without which this channel could not have lasted as long as it has. For those who are feeling particularly generous, you can still support my work through Patreon and now through Subscribestar as well, through the links in the description below.